Hello everyone, this is the mind of Luth and thank you for joining me today. I wanted to quickly share my thoughts about a clip that's been circulating on social media where Shannon Sharp, Gil Arenas, and Chad Ochocinco are recapping Shannon's interview with Amanda Seals. In my last commentary, I stated that it was a bad idea for black people to emulate or model their relationship dynamics after black celebrities, entertainers, athletes, musicians, etc. because the rules in general are different for them. So since the civil rights movement, black people turned away from political activists, academics, religious leaders, and business people for guidance and leadership. And we started to idolize black celebrities because of their fame, wealth, and proximity to whiteness. But only very recently have black people begun to realize that black celebrity culture is very toxic, dysfunctional, and not conducive to happy, healthy marriages, families, and communities because celebrities tend to throw money at their problems and they use their social status to hide their narcissism and self-centeredness. Now, I'm not saying that all black celebrities or all celebrities in general are selfish narcissists. They're not. I'm saying that you're more likely to find selfish narcissists among the celebrity class. So, because black men and black women worship celebrities and we live vicariously through them, our ideals, our values, our beliefs, and our social conduct emulates how we think celebrities live. Because male celebrities have shown a preference for strippers and sex workers, impressionable black men have developed a preference for uh, the stripper sex worker archetype. They all have the same look. So you know that their preference has been programmed. On the other hand, um, black women who are attracted to these black athletes and rappers have a preference for men who act like rappers and athletes. And they try to look like the women that these men are attracted to strippers and sex workers so shannon gilbert and chad are known for being dysfunctional womanizers and while i do agree with some of the points that they made in this clip i'm going to explain why these guys prove my point about why black people should not emulate celebrity dating culture but i ain't got no pro problem with Amanda seals she was great uh she's very funny she has uh and i do believe some of the people have done her wrong and I think a lot of a lot of because that's what you deal with. We all go through it dealing with men or women. Mm -hmm. You're not dating them. You're dating their childhood, their mm -hmm. past traumas. Mm -hmm. That's what you that's what you got to get past. So I'm excited. I was excited to have her. Uh, she was great. She taught me a lot of things, uh, but she oh, she's highly, 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 highly educated. She's real versed. She can sing. She's a comedian. She's a writer. Is she, is she, is she married? No, she's not married. She's oh, not married. The same day, huh? Uh -oh. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you list all the qualities that she has, yeah. and I'm just curious if, if, if she was married because that, that, I mean, that sounds like that. That's a great catch for someone. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds like some flaws for some <laughs> men because, as educated as she is, right? right yeah. She's, she's there's a standard of a man that she's looking for right yeah if it's not on the same educational level as her she's gonna right, right. down on and mm -hmm. if that is yeah. if they're more educated than her then they talking down to her right. so mm -hmm. these are the type of women that will typically be single because they can't find the equal partner to mm. they are she she wants someone that that's that's versed. She wants someone that's inquisitive. She mm. wants someone that wants to travel. I right. mean, look, to each his own. So, as you guys heard, Shannon starts off by being complimentary towards Amanda, saying that she's talented, beautiful, educated, and Chad immediately interjects, asking if she's married at the age of 42. As if Amanda's entire identity as a woman is insignificant if it is not being used to enrich or benefit a man. This is another way of implying that Amanda does not exist if she's not married to a man. The statement, is she married, or the question, is she married, reflects the dismissive attitude that most black male celebrities have towards women, especially black women in general. And why is Chad asking if Amanda is married when these men do not value marriage? Most black male celebrities do not value marriage, and as a result, most average black men do not value marriage either. 
Unlike the average working class man, these celebrity men do not need an educated woman because as I stated months ago, so-called high-valued men intentionally choose pretty preferences that depend on them for their money. This is the most assured way of controlling a beautiful woman. Make sure she needs you for money. And we saw the situation with Diddy and Cassie. So I stated a couple of days ago that athletes and entertainers prefer low-maintenance transactional relationships because their focus is on their career, which admittedly requires a lot of time, energy, and effort. Females, quote-unquote, and their fertile wombs are considered a distraction until these men get horny, they feel lonely, or they fail at something important to them. So Gilbert Arenas chimed in and said that educated black women like Amanda cannot have successful relationships because they look down on the men who aren't on their level and they cannot accept instruction, guidance, or leadership from a man who is more educated than them. He didn't say this verbatim, I'm just paraphrasing it. So this may or may not be true, but these people, these celebrities, these men, rarely have ever addressed why educated black men and black women have a chip on their shoulder in a dating arena. If you're a marginalized person because of race, gender, sexuality, complexion, hair texture, phenotype, and or socioeconomic class, society treats you as if you do not have the right to be happy unless you meet a certain criteria. For black men and women, the criteria is either physical beauty, education, and or high earning potential. Marginalized people with low social value need to be highly accomplished or very attractive to receive basic respect they have to jump over a, a thousand hurdles towards a high earning career or a high social status to be seen as relevant or important. This is why a lot of successful black men and black women treat their racial counterparts with a subtle contempt. Like you should be grateful that they're even spending time with you because they have better things to do or better options to entertain. This contemptuous attitude is a self-defense mechanism and low key bitterness about having low social value. Marginalized people learn that they need to work extra hard to have leverage in relationships and society in general, right? So what is leverage? Leverage is assets that are resources that can be used to benefit the relationship. For beautiful women, their looks are their leverage. Uh, for average looking women, their earning potential or the ability to serve their man to make his life easier is their leverage. For men, the same thing, physical appearance and money is leverage. So leverage is a bargaining tool to incentivize respect, commitment, investment, and loyalty from your partner. The problem is many black people low key resent the fact that they have to work so hard to gain that leverage. So once they gain it and the symbols of success that come with it, their car, their house, their social status, they use it as a personality trait. So the college degree, the car, the house, the wardrobe, the high income become a part of the person's identity because society told them that they were nothing without it. And it's hard for these successful black people to articulate this because it's subconscious programming. These are uh, spoken and unspoken rules that are taught to black men, women, and children. And the rules are by and large unspoken uh, because black people do not want to acknowledge the fact that we perpetuate our own marginalization. We judge black people more harshly for not meeting certain criteria um, then we do other races. Educated or successful black people have a laundry list of demands for dealing with other black people, but the standards are more lax for other races. This is partially because marginalized people like to or prefer to or try to oppress other marginalized people to gain power or leverage. If I tell you you aren't good enough for me because you're too dark or too short or too broke or too nappy or too big backed or too uneducated, that automatically makes me superior and therefore impervious to your judgment or criticism about my inherent flaws as a marginalized black person as well. So it's all a self-defense mechanism. But in order for us to admit that we're defensive, we first have to admit that we're vulnerable. We're scared, we're frustrated, and we're even depressed about how difficult it is to just exist in a world where your very being is being picked apart and analyzed under a microscope from the day you're born. So to go back a little bit, Amanda Seals is not smart because she's educated. She was intelligent before she got her degrees. In America, your education is just a license to get a job. Most college trained people don't know shit about anything that matters except getting a job to pay taxes and participate in the capitalist system. How are you educated but don't know how to maintain healthy interpersonal relationships? Why are Americans running to the third world to find love with uneducated sex workers 
if they're so damn smart. So no, Amanda is not smart and talented because she has degrees. And she's not single because she's smart and educated. She's single because the culture of dating and relationships in the black community in America has been heavily influenced by capitalism, celebrity worship, and trauma. I listened to some of Amanda's interview with Shannon and she comes off as thorny, defensive, combative, and not because she's a bad person. I think it's because she's masking a deep insecurity about an aspect of her identity that's been marginalized. So she's overcompensating by being defensive. She's easily triggered or irritated. Um, she tries to, I'm gonna say show off her intellect, but her intellect is a way for her to get leverage. It's like, okay, look at me. I am a black woman, but I'm smart. So I need to use my intelligence to give me leverage so that I have access to opportunities that I would not otherwise because I'm a black woman, right? So now like Ebony Williams, it kind of comes off like, okay, I'm beating you in the head with my degrees because I think that my degrees make me more valuable as a woman or as a relationship partner. When in actuality, you know, this is their way, in my opinion, I'm just speculating. This is their way of saying, look at me, I'm now worthy. I'm more, I have more value because my value was stripped from me as a marginalized black woman. So you said, if I went to school and I made this much money, I'd be worth more. I have more, I would have more value in society. And so here it is. Here is my value. See, I have to tell you what my value is. I have to talk about my degrees because my degrees tell you how much value I have because you don't see it unless I talk about it. You don't see my value as a woman inherently, as a black woman inherently. So I have to talk about the things that you value or what that society values to give me value. To say, okay, now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on this level. I'm not just the average black hood girl with no degree. I have this paperwork saying that I've passed a certain amount of tests. I've passed this criteria. I make this much money. So now you're not just looking at a black woman. You're looking at a black woman with money, with degrees, with status. It becomes a part of the identity. So I think that Amanda and a lot of other successful black men and women, they use their intelligence and their degrees to mask a deep insecurity about an aspect of their identity that has been marginalized. So these people become, they overcompensate by being defensive. Uh, Amanda seems easily triggered or irritated. She doesn't seem to be calm or content with herself for whatever reason. But again, it is hard for black people, black women even, to express our frustrations objectively and rationally because our thoughts and words are the proverbial lid on the boiling pot of water that's trying to boil over. It's easy for us to get irritated because our experiences have been pushed down by societal pressures and our experiences are ignored or dismissed as anecdotal. And we don't want to acknowledge how our family, our community, and our culture relentlessly inflicts us with psychological damage and tells us that we're not women and we're not men or we're not American or we're not human unless we have a degree, lots of money, light skin, a big ass, or a big penis. And if you don't have looks, i.e. light skin and good hair, you'd better have a lot of money to make your existence tolerable to the opposite sex. So celebrities, especially in the entertainment fraternity, they are not equipped to have these types of nuanced discussions because they have status, fame, and money which reduces their marginalization and the rules of engagement for the average Joe or Pam do not apply to them. Their money and status buffers them from suffering the consequences of poor decisions in relationships. The best they can do for us is to be an example of what not to do. They are not role models and we should not look up to them as such. Why would you listen to someone whose outcomes will be vastly different than yours if you do exactly what they do? And this brings me to a topic I discussed a few months ago. When Cassie received her multi-million dollar settlement from Diddy, a lot of black men were very angry or upset, and they said she played the game, she knew what it was, and she was only in it for money, not for justice. To which I responded, if you're telling women, black women in particular, that their degrees mean nothing, and you only want fit, feminine, and friendly women, how are these preferences supposed to take care of themselves once you get tired of them? If your only requirements for women is light skin, a big ass, and good hair, why are you upset when these women ask for an allowance to take care of themselves once your relationship has ended? How else are these women supposed to survive with no education in this society? What are they supposed to do? The thing is, these men don't want these women to survive. In fact, a lot of these men want the women that they've used for sex and youth to languish in poverty once they finish feasting off of them like a vampire. Because when a man sees a woman suffering once he's through with her, he kind of feels like he's won. He succeeded in sucking the life out of her to make her unappealing to other quality men. 
Now, celebrities can play the light-skinned, big-booty, dumb bird game because they have millions of dollars in disposable income, but the average Joe Schmo does not. The average Joe has to be more responsible with his dating and mating choices. And so if his girl does not have a degree, she better have a work ethic. She better know how to manage money and a household and children, and she better know how to manage her emotions. Listen, it doesn't matter how much money you start out with as a couple. If you're with someone who is rock solid, they have good character, they're mentally sound, physically healthy, hardworking, patient, loyal, supportive, and mature, you can build a happy and secure relationship. If we saw what was going on with Martella Melody Holt from Love Marriage Huntsville, a lot of us were really upset about the demise of their marriage because none of them came into the relationship with a lot of money. You know, they met each other in college. They started off with nothing and they were able to build, you know, a modicum of success within a relatively short period of time of working together because they had a commitment to each other in the relationship. And things fell apart because of other dynamics, immaturity, insecurity, mental health issues, so on and so forth. But Martell and Melody, before their relationship fell apart, was an example of what a couple who have the same goal, the same perfect purpose, the same work ethic, the same values, what they can accomplish together without a lot of money. Martella Melody were not celebrities and they did not adhere to the celebrity valuation system when it came to relationships. So a lot of black people are missing out on good relationships because we want to have transactional celebrity relationships. We don't want partnership. We want someone that has the affect of a celebrity. We want to be treated like celebrities. We're attracted to black caricatures and stereotypes of beauty. That's why all of these dumb celebrities and athletes have the same girlfriend. They all look like sisters. They sleep with the same women because they're not looking for wives and families. They're looking for trophies to collect. They want a woman to be the background to their foreground. And if you're a dumb, pretty bird like Drea, then you know, you don't really have much to say anyway. And we really don't want to hear what you have to say, to be honest, because more than likely it'll be ignorant and inappropriate. So if you're an average Joe or an average Pam, your relationship has to be more equal because we're not dealing with extreme levels of wealth or beauty in these dynamics. You're pretty much at the same level economically or physically. And there's nothing wrong with that if you have a plan and a purpose for your relationship besides sex, attention, and instant gratification. Yes, Gilbert Arenas was partially correct. A lot of educated black women and men, and men, and men, have a hard time being in relationships because we have a subtle amount of contempt for each other because we had to get an education in order to be seen as valuable or uh, respectable or important or significant in society. So if along your journey, throughout your journey, you're told you're worth nothing, you're not good enough, you're not cute enough, you're not tall enough, you're not, you don't have enough money. If you're being told this constantly in your dating life and then you finally reach to the top of the mountain and you are the boss, you are the CEO, you're making a million dollars a year, you have all this money, you're going to have contempt and some bitterness within your heart about how you were treated along the journey because a lot of successful people, they are fueled by some trauma. Most educated people that I know don't go to school because they enjoy education. That's why they stop once they get their degree. Most educated people go to school to get a job, to make a certain amount of money, to live in a certain neighborhood. That's it. It's a means to an end for them. So there's going to be some animosity, I feel like. I'm just speculating here. I could be wrong. Towards other marginalized people who judge them harshly for not having the degree while they're working towards it, for not being at a certain level. And this is not the case across the board. I personally don't care if a person has their degree as long as they are a good person, they work hard, they have talent, skills, intellect, you know, they're a good communicator. The degree, again, is a license for a job. There are plenty of people who have degrees who are dumb as hell, period. But if you treat people as if they're insignificant or they don't have any value because they don't have money, because they don't have a degree, because they don't have status, once they get those things, they're going to wave it like a flag. Like, see, here I am. I made it. Look at me now. They're doing that because when they didn't have those things, they were seen as insignificant and didn't have any value. So I have to wave my flag of my degree and my income and my, my zip code where I live at and my clothes to show you that I'm a valuable person. Because if you don't see those things on me, you will treat me the way you did when I did not have those degrees, when I didn't have this house, when I didn't have this car, right? So I have to it's almost like a badge of honor. It's like a, a press pass or an ID badge. Like you have access to these facilities, these resources, these institutions because you have this badge saying that you're not like the other black people that we don't like. You have passed certain tests, you've met certain criteria, 
And so black people, men and women, wave their money and their credentials and education like a flag to their partners is to basically make themselves feel more valuable in relationships. And it kind of backfires because it becomes obnoxious. For me, it does. Like, if you're a dumbass, I don't care how much degrees you have. Honestly, you know, it doesn't make a difference. Yes, I have a master's degree, and so what? That's irrelevant. If you are a dumbass, your degree means nothing to me, personally. And it should mean nothing in relationships other than this person has the potential to earn more money. They have a career, they have an identity outside of this relationship, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having a degree. I don't have anything against degrees either. But to use your degree as some sort of like character evaluation, it, that doesn't determine the kind of character you have, doesn't determine the quality of partner you would be. Because partnership isn't just about your earning potential, it's about your ability to communicate, your ability to compromise, to negotiate, to work together, to be partners. If you can't do that, your degree means nothing, to be honest. Now, this is not an indictment against people with degrees. Do what you gotta do. We live in America, you need a degree for a job. It is what it is. But again, Amanda Seals should not be judged harshly for having a degree. She's not single because she has a degree. She's single because her dating pool consists of men who do not respect or value marriage as a culture because they're worshiping celebrities. These celebrities can run through hoes into their 40s and 50s and then finally settle down. These men are trying to emulate the same behavior. So you have good women who are beautiful, like Amanda Seals, who are educated and intelligent, who have to work extra hard to prove their value because these men wanna play games. These men are emulating celebrities because they don't know who they are yet. They don't have a sense of purpose or values. Their purpose and their value is emulating and idolizing celebrities who don't know who they are either. They're just a bag of money. That's it. They have nothing else to offer, to be honest. So anyway, there's nothing wrong with being an average Joe and average Pam. If you have a plan and purpose for your relationship besides sex, attention, and instant gratification. All right. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there. I look forward to reading your feedback. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.